Okay guys, what's going on? We are back in Outriders and we have got the DLC for Outriders, the Bloody World Slayer, launching in five days now. And you guys are going to want to get prepared to make sure that you are ready for the new DLC and you've got everything at hand that you will need to go in guns blazing. So if you haven't already, smash the beautiful blue thumbs up and subscribe with post notifications turned on. It'd be greatly appreciated. With that being said, let's get into what you guys need to be doing. So, starting off with your stash. Now, this is going to be the thing that you kind of want to hammer in right at the beginning and right at the end of your preparations. As you can see, the stash capacity is at 100 currently, and mine is full. I have got everything already stored up and I need to sieve through all of this essentially what you are going to want to do is you are going to want to make sure that you have got everything that you want and will need for specific builds and stuff set up inside of your stash and clear out all of the garbage that you're not going to use because I can guarantee if you're anything like me there is going to be a hell of a lot of garbage in there indeed dismantling those is going to obviously clear up space for new things that have come into the game come the new DLC and it's going to be really important on top of that you've obviously got duplications now these duplications are going to want to be windled down so you want to essentially keep the better of the few modifications it can be altered on each one so if you have numerous builds that need specific ones on them then feel free to obviously duplicate those up and make sure you've got the specific mods on each one but essentially you are wanting to windle this down to give yourself a bit more room we know that we have got a, a bit more of a stash level if you want to call it that so we've got a capacity which is larger i believe come the new dlc so you will have a lot more room but there are going to be things that you have got numerous things of and you just don't need now on top of that the things that are in the stash as well you are going to look into some of these and be able to see that you can level them all up this is going to be very very crucial again and it's going to mean that you need materials so when we go into this right here into zahidi we go in and we want to upgrade our gear. Now, when we look at some of the stuff that we're using right now, you can see right here, each one has got attributes on it. Now, I have all of mine maxed out for my specific build I'm using right now, and I would recommend you do that with any gear that you do have. Now, with those, you are going to need shards, and they are going to come from dismantles. Now, shards are used as crafting to raise specific attributes for equipment gained by dissembling weapons and armor. So you're essentially going to want to hammer through expeditions and get as much gear as you can, dismantle as much as you've got, and then just level up all of the gear that you reckon you are going to need this is going to be extremely crucial to make sure that you go in with the biggest advantage as uh, i have had a bit of hands-on time with the beta access and it is going to be a little bit challenging to say the least obviously i don't know how much i can and can't say but you guys are going to want to make sure that your weapons and your armor sets are fully maxed out to the point where you no longer are worried about dying or if you're on your own or even if you're in a group on top of that, modifications, these are the things that you utilize inside of your weapons and your armors, and you are going to want to get as many of these unlocked as you can. Now, as you can see, I am quite lazy and I still have quite a few padlocked up, mainly because I don't use them on an individual basis. I use them with the weapons that they've got on them and I am, again, like I state, really lazy. I played this game for a very long time and I didn't dismantle the ones that have got these modifications on to have them unlocked, but I will be doing that over the next few days to make sure we've got everything ready. So make sure that you've got all of your tiers upgraded and uploaded so you've got everything unlocked ready for your next conflict inside of World Slayer. Main reason being for that is that you are going to have an absolute shed ton of new weapons, new armor sets and stuff like that and you want to be able to modify those to the maximum capacity that and on top of it you're also going to have a load of new mods you also need to unlock. Whilst we're here we have got a load of resources including scrap, we've got leather, we have also got iron, we've got titanium, and we have got drop pod resources. Now, I recommend maxing these out as much as you can. As you can see, my scrap is maxed out. My drop pod resources are near enough maxed out as well. That's getting quite close. And I essentially want to make sure that I have got enough materials that I can upgrade anything that I do obtain uh, the, in the new World Slayer DLC. And we're going to want to make sure that we've got enough materials for all sorts of things, making sure we can level up making sure we can purchase what we want to purchase if any god rolls come along then we want to make sure that we purchase those as well and having materials is going to help you quite a lot in actually being able to upgrade and make sure you've got everything done now when we look at what else it is that you guys are going to want to do 
This for me is going to be across numerous characters. As we all know, in these styles of games, metas will change. So making sure that you guys have got the storyline done up until this point. If you are a continuous player from launch or even if you've been playing it just recently, trying to get through to the final mission and get that completed is going to be pretty damn important. I know that they say that you can jump straight into World Slayer and go back to this, but it does give you a decent storyline that gives you a bit of an insight as to where we're going to be going next with World Slayer. And on top of that, it'll also mean that it gets you prepared on the regard of how to play, the play styles that you can utilize, and it will give you a bit more of an insight onto how you can use your build against other things. Essentially, a lot of experience comes from the story itself. Now, if you've done the story and you've done all of that jazz, you are just going to want to focus on the only thing that this game ever has to offer with Endgame, and that is going to be the expeditions right here. I would recommend if you can't do tier 15s on your own, then jump into a lobby with friends or matchmake. Now, the matchmaking system as of right now in its current state and the current update is a little bit sketchy, and I know that they are working on that for the new update as well. The new DLC is going to be a lot smoother from what I gather. But this is all we are going to really want to be hammering into to make sure we have got the maximum amount of drop pod resources, titanium, leather, so on and so forth. Now what you will notice is that the ones that surround the Eye of the Storm do genuinely cost money. You will notice that you have to utilize your drop pod units to get in. If you complete it on the highest difficulty, you will obtain a significant amount back. But if you guys are just wanting to go in without spending and are just bulk bulking up you can just go into a normal one and clear off with zero expenditure and it'll be a 50k drop pod resource gain back that's a quite a big regain on that leveling now as an overall that's practically all anybody really needs to do inside of this game but making sure that you've got the skills and your class and your accolades and that everything that is where you want them to be at obviously we've got a new class system which is going to mean you've got a load more points into different things you are also going to want to upgrade as well so make sure you've got all of your points into your class points and everything set up the way that you want it as far as your inventory goes i have mine clogged up with to put politely crap there is absolutely nothing in here really of any substance but what you can do is get yourself a couple of build sorts, maybe one for a group activity and one for solo. This for me is a pretty heavy one. This works for both. So I've obviously got the gravity leap, which is going to work quite nicely with a debuff. We obviously have the ground slam with earthquake and we've got golem alongside. We've got this beautiful little mechanic right here, which gives us moaning winds and causes a shed ton of damage. So for me, this build works as a bit of a universal with players or without, and you guys are going to want to also start thinking about builds that you guys can work on. I'll leave a link down to the playlist down below where we've got a load of builds for you guys to, to go into and a load of fun things that you guys can utilize throughout your time in Outriders. With that being said, guys, go ahead, claim all your resources, get everything upgraded to the maximum level that you possibly can and get yourself ready for the new world slayer dlc thank you so much again for watching guys i appreciate all your faces if you haven't already like subscribe and as always up until the next time i'll see you in the clouds